Happy Easter, everyone. Uh, so, as some of you know, I'm a, a cemeterian. I like to go for for strolls in the uh, in cemeteries, and I actually have a, uh, a tradition I've had for about 10 years now. So every Easter, I will go to a, a cemetery, and I will read First uh, Corinthians 15, the resurrection pa passage on um, on Easter, and this year i'm actually at a a jewish uh, cemetery in north jersey as you can see and it's actually a quite elaborate this is a very large jewish cemetery here and i thought you know what? i'm going to share uh, my reading this year on easter with all of you uh, and speaking of which uh, just as an encouragement uh, you know please keep the jewish people in your prayers uh, that they may know their Messiah, Yeshua, and that when Jesus returns, when he returns in the clouds, that one day many, many, many Jews, Messianic, Messianic Jews who know their Lord, they know their, they know their Messiah, they will burst from many graves and they will meet their Lord in the air. So please, please keep the Jewish people in your prayers. Uh, that being said, uh, I am going to read 1 Corinthians 15. Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, in which also you stand, by which also you are saved. If you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in him, for I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time, most of whom remain until now, but some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and, all, and last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared to me also. For I am the least of the apostles, and not fit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me, did not prove vain, but I labored even more than all of them. Yet not but uh, I, but the grace of God with me. Whatever then it was, I or they, so we preach and so you believed. Now, if Christ is preached and he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is vain. Your faith also is vain. Moreover, we are even found to be false witnesses of God because we testified against God that he raised Christ whom he did not raise, if in fact the dead are not raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is vain. Your faith also is vain. Moreover, we are even found to be false witnesses of God because we testified against God that he raised Christ whom he did not raise, if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. You are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If we have hope, if we have hoped in Christ in this life only, we are we are of all men most to be pitied. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who are asleep. For since by a man come came death, by a man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all will be made alive. But each in its own order, Christ the first fruits. After that, those who are in Christ at his coming. 
Then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to the God, to the God and Father, when he has abolished all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be abolished is death. For he, for he has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when he says all things are put in subjection, it is evident that he is ex, uh, accepted who put all things in subjection to him. When all these things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will be subjected to the one who subjected all things to him so that God may be all in all. Otherwise, what would those do who are baptized for the dead? If the, if the dead are not raised at all, why then are they baptized for them? Why are we also in danger every hour? I affirm, brethren, by the boasting in you which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. If from human motives I fought with wild beasts at Ephesus, what does it profit me? If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. Become sober-minded as you ought, and stop sinning, for some have no knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. But someone will say, how are the dead raised, and with what kind of body do they come? You fool, that which you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And that which you sow, you do not sow the body which is to be but a bare grain, perhaps of wheat or of something else. But God gives it a body, just as he wished, and to each of the seeds a body of its own. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one flesh of men, and another flesh of beasts, and another flesh of birds, and another of fish. There are also heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the glory of the heavenly is one, and the glory of the earthly is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, and for star differs from the star in glory. So also in the resurrection of the dead, it is sown a perishable body. It is raised imperishable body. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown in natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. So also it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living soul. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, then the spiritual. From the first man is from the earth, earthly. The second man is from heaven. As is the earthly, so also are those who are earthly. And as is the heavenly, so also are those who are heavenly. Just as we have borne the image of the earthly, we will also bear the image of the heavenly. Now I say this, brethren, the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet was sound and the dead will be raised, imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable must put on imperishable, imperishable and this mortal must put on immortality but when this perishable will have put on the imperishable and this mortal will have put on immortality then will come about the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory oh death where is your victory oh death where is your sting the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law but thanks to be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my, bro my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord.